this video, we're going to write code in Excel VBA that allows us to create and run an SQL style query within our Excel spreadsheet. So what I'm showing you here at the beginning is actually a preview of what we're going to build today. On this first tab called data, I have a data set of loan records and then on the second tab called results I have a run query button so if I click on this run query button I get a prompt to enter my select statement where I can query the data set on the first tab so I'm gonna begin with the keyword select I'm gonna keep it simple for now so we're gonna say select star to select all of the fields the columns I'm going to use the keyword from reference our data sheet which is going to be the name of the sheet followed by a dollar sign and then we can have a condition where the type field is equal to just auto loans so when I hit enter or click OK what we should see in columns A through D is query results that appear that should only have loan records where the type is equal to auto loans and there it is so the first thing we want to do is hit the keyboard shortcut alt f11 to go into the vba editor window anywhere in this project window i'm going to right click go to insert and then module before we begin writing our code we want to go up to tools references and then make certain that this Microsoft ActiveX database object 6.1 library is selected if it's not selected and you don't see it here it's not going to be at the top here it's going to be down under Microsoft ActiveX database or data objects sorry so just make sure that is selected what this does is it opens up a set of options that is specific to what we're trying to do here which is to connect to a certain source and then create record sets that are essentially query outputs so We'll call this subroutine my query and we're going to begin by declaring a variable called connection it's going to be as the data type new and then ado db which stands for activex data objects and once i hit a full stop what you're going to see is a set of additional options here one we want is connection because this variable is going to hold the string that connects to our Excel workbook so I'm going to reference our connection variable again we're going to open this connection and then we're going to provide a particular connection string now this is what this needs to look like um, I'll put this all this code in the description of this video so it'll be there so basically we're just telling it to connect to our Excel workbook you can see here in the middle we have the keyword source and then we come outside of our string we use an and symbol to join it to this workbook and then full name of this workbook so now we have our connection what we want to do is declare a new variable and we'll just call this SQL query it's gonna be as the data type string because this is just gonna hold this variable is gonna hold our query select statement so our SQL query is gonna be equal to just what you're used to seeing when you input a select statement to run a query 
So I have select star, which means select all the fields or columns. And we have the keyword from, and then we reference inside brackets our source, which is our data sheet, and that needs to be followed by a dollar sign. So now we need to set up our record set, which is going to be the output. It's, it's going to be the variable that stores the output of our query. So we'll just call this RS for record set. It's going to be as the data type new, and then we're going to reference our ADO DB again, and this time we want record set. So our RS, again, we need to reference it and then open, and we need to input the first two arguments. The first one is the source, which is going to be our SQL query variable, and it's our source because it contains a reference to our data sheet. Then our connection is going to be our connection variable that we set up earlier. So now we have everything we need to run the query. We have the connection, we have the select statement, we have the variable that stores our query results. We want to now write this to our results sheet. So I'm going to declare a new variable called, we'll just call this our sheet for results sheet. It's going to be as the data type worksheet. This is an object variable so it needs to begin with the keyword set so our results sheet is equal to this workbook and then worksheets and the name of our sheet is called results. So we want to do a, a at least a couple of things for now with our results sheet. So I'm going to begin with an with statement and reference that variable. The first thing we want to do is with the cells, we want to clear the contents because the idea is we're going to run multiple queries and each time we run a new query, we want to clear out the results that were there from the previous one. So after that, we want to reference the range where we want our results to begin. So for now, we're going to start with range A2. And then we're going to use a method called copy from record set and then reference our record set variable. That's all we're going to do now. So we're going to end our with statement. And then the final thing we need to do here is reference our connection variable again and close it out. So for now, we're just running the select statement out of our VBA editor window. We will, a little bit later, get to where we create a prompt for an input box so that we can run the query from our spreadsheet via a macro button. But for now, I'm just going to run it, and what we should see here is a query output to columns A through D. And there it is. Now, you'll notice we don't currently have headers here, so that's something we need to add in there. So if we want to add headers, what we're going to do is add some code here to bring in the headers from our record set. Now, the thing about it is it needs to be dynamic and flexible because 
based on what we input in our query select statement, the number of headers could change. So we need to add a for loop here. So we're going to begin with the keyword for and then a counter variable. And it's going to begin at zero because we're talking about an array in VBA, which the count begins at zero rather than one. So we want this count to go to our record set and then fields and then count minus one because the count's going to return a value of four but our count on our fields actually starts at zero and goes to three so we have that and now what we want to do is reference our cells again and we want to write this to the first row always. So we're going to have a value of one here, and then we have our counter variable, which will pick up whatever field we're on. It begins at zero, so we need to add one to that because this cells, we're addressing our worksheet in row one, and it, there is no column zero. So we have to begin with the first field at zero, add one to that. So we want the value to be equal to our record set fields again. This time we want to add our counter variable on that so that we begin at our first counter field, which is zero, the first element, which should be the loan ID, and goes through this loop until we get all the way to the final column. So we want the name to be input to those cells. So then we go to our next counter. So now we can run this and we should see headers there and there they are. So this should be dynamic now. So if I change this select star to just select the loan ID the amount it's dynamic so now the final thing we want to do is add a input box for our query statement rather than running it out of the VBA editor window so all we really need to do here is rather than have some hard-coded select statement we're just going to add an input box and that first argument is just a prompt that gives a message so I'm just going to say enter select statement that will be that macro button so this is called my query so we'll go up to developer go to insert buttons draw one in here and link it to the my query code we'll edit text and we'll call this So now we get this prompt, we'll add our select statement, select, we'll select star again from our data sheet, which needs to be enclosed in brackets and ends with a dollar sign. And then maybe this time we'll have a where condition, 
location equals branch two. And there it is. We get a data set of only records where the location is branch two. So now that we have our SQL query set up, we can do all sorts of things. Just to show you another example of what we can do, we can sum the amount column and group by type or location. So if I wanted to group by location and sum on the amount, I would reference First, the columns I want to group by, and then use the keyword sum and reference the column I want to total. Now, when I sum, when you sum any column, it will give it a generic header. If you want it to have some more meaningful header, you can right after it use the keyword as and then give it a name in brackets and you need to use the keyword group by and reference any columns that are not being aggregated can see there we have our totals by branch location well that is all for now thanks for watching please remember to subscribe